Justin Fuller, ex-Honda salesman, tech lover, and today I'm your host, and we're gonna be reviewing the 2024 Honda HR-V Sport model. So if you're considering looking for an SUV and you're thinking, I don't need necessarily something as big as a CRV, but I don't want a small sedan, this might be the ride for you. So let's find out how this car stacks up against other makes and models out in the world. And of course, is it different from a 2023? We're gonna go over all that more. Right, guys so let's talk about what's underneath the hood of the 2024 honda hrv so you are looking at a two-liter engine putting out 158 horsepower that runs to a cvd transmission and then out to two-wheel drive or all-wheel drive depending on what you decide to pick if the two liter with 158 sounds roughly familiar that's because this is typically what you would find in a base model civic all right so let's do up a horsepower comparison so you can understand how does this two liter putting out 158 horsepower stack up to other makes and models out in the world while that's on the screen i'll just remind you that if you were to drop to a 2023 it is going to be the same engine same transmission all of that just a little bit different look on the outside all right guys so i want to talk to you about miles per gallon but first i just want to point out the beautiful 18 inch wheel that lives on the sport trim so one of those features that you get by being here. So this vehicle gets 26 into the city and 32 on the highway. In the world of smaller SUVs, I don't know if I like that, right? Because you could jump up to a CRV and get 28 in the city, and I believe 34 on the highway. Uh, or you could jump over to something like a Civic and get considerably more gas wish. So don't know how I feel about that, but I am gonna throw a comparison up on the screen so you can understand how does the MPGs in this vehicle stack up to other makes and models out in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you, if you're looking at a 2023, it's gonna be the exact same, no worries there. You feel free to shop pre-owned. Now, I wanted you to get a nice front profile shot of this vehicle while we talk about zero to 60 times. So depending on who you're talking to, the zero to 60 time on the 2024 Honda HRV is anywhere from 9.3 seconds to 10 seconds. Not a speed demon. If you were in something like a CRV, you'd be at 8.3 seconds. So not incredibly awful, but I wanna throw something up on the screen so you can see how does this model stack up against other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you, if you're in a 2023, we already know it's the same engine, same transmission. You can expect very similar zero to 60 times. Now, if you're looking at small SUVs, chances are cargo space is probably something that's gonna be a little bit important to you. So I wanna talk to you about that. So let's flip around. The first thing I just wanna point out is this is not powered. They do not offer a powered tailgate on the HRV, so just something to be aware of. Now, when we come in here, you'll see that there are carpeted floor mats that come standard with the car. All right, so back here, you've got 24.4 cubic feet of cargo space in the back end of this vehicle. Now, additionally, you'll see that you do have a power lip back here. You do have tie downs, and if you need car seats, you have your tethers and your anchors. And then underneath here is where you're gonna find the spare to your vehicle, which is full diameter. I mean, it's full height, just not full width. Now, additionally, if you flip this sucker up, you're gonna see that you're jacking your accessories and this little funnel, which I wanna explain right here. Have you ever run out of gas? It happens, I've done it twice in my life. And this little guy is not a Shiwi, and no, it's not a tiny kazoo, and it's not for New Year's. What this is though for is I'll show you. If you come over here to the gas cap, first off, I'll point this connected to your door locks. If your doors are unlocked, it'll be unlocked. And if you lock them, it'll lock them. But this is capless now, so it has a valve. So if you ran out of gas and you didn't happen to have a gas can on you, you need a way to be able to hold this open to pour gas into it. That is the function of this little funnel right here. All right, guys, so we talked about the 24.4 cubic feet of cargo space that you have with the seats up. I wanna throw that comparison up so you can see how does this vehicle stack up against other makes and models out in the world. While that's up, I wanna do two things. One, I'm gonna fold the seats down. So now we got the seats down and then remind you too, that if you're looking at a 23, the cargo space dimensions do the exact same. Now, when you fold these seats down, you now have 55.1 cubic feet of cargo space in the back end of this car. It's actually pretty decent, I'm not gonna lie, and it's flat. Unlike the CRV that has this huge hump now, it's pretty flat. You could probably get maybe a twin air mattress back here if you needed to camp in your car, things went awry, or if you just like camping in your car. So not a bad setup and it's flat, so very usable for a lot of different things. If you needed to throw a bicycle back here, height-wise, you'd probably have to go sideways. Uh, but if you had a lot of like drum equipment or if you're camping or anything like that, you'd probably be pretty good to go. But I wanna throw a comparison up so you can see how does the 55.1 cubic feet stack up against other makes and models out there in the world. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're looking at a 2023, the dimensions are the same. All right, guys, so I wanna stop real quick and talk about something that I find very important and that's when i was selling cars i regularly ran into people that they weren't really sure on the trim that they wanted or that they needed so they were kind of struggling to understand those differences so i want to talk to you about that this is the sport trim below this is the lx and above this is the exl those are the three trims that live in this vehicle so 
This car is, I want to say $28,050. That, that's really the, the price that you see listed on like the Honda website, plus the $1,350 of destination that they charge regardless of where it goes. Whether it goes five feet or across the country, that's what you pay. So the MSRP really of this car is $28,050. So I want you to understand, if I'm in this car and I'm thinking about dropping down to that LX model, one, how much money is that gonna save me? But two, what is the list of items that I'm gonna have to give up to get there, right? So after you've taken a look at that, let's go the other way. I'm sitting in this port, I'm going, hey man, maybe I wanna spend a little bit of extra money, maybe I want that EXL, maybe I want a couple extra things. Okay, well then let's talk about that. Let me show you what extra amount of money you would have to spend, but then what is that list of items that you're gonna get by jumping up to that EXL model? After you've taken a look at that, let's hop back in. All right guys, so here we are in the second row of this vehicle and I have the seat pushed back as if I was riding behind me. I happen to be six foot, about 250, so a little bit bigger of a guy. Now with that, I've still got a good amount of leg space to work with. Leg space wise, you've got 37.7 inches of leg space in the back end of this vehicle. So I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can see how does the leg space in this vehicle stack up to other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you, if you were jumping up to something like a CRV, it has 41 inches. So. It'll get you a few extra inches back there, but nothing huge, right? As someone who rides in a lot of these different cars, you can be just fine in this car depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Now, related to the second row, I wanna to talk to you about a couple things, right? The first is, this is obviously a cloth interior. Now you've got leather on the sides over here where your, hand, your elbows go and, and leather right here. And I wanna see you have a leather shifter too. Typically sport trims and Hondas are kind of a combo of leather and mixed with some sort of cloth material. Uh, the cloth in here is black, right? It's only gonna come to black interior. So if you don't want black, you probably don't wanna be in this trim. And then it's got this orange uh, stitching. So kind of a cool look. And it's got kind of a pattern finish right here that you can see down here as well. So not a bad look. Now back here, I will let you know that you do not have air vents and you do not have USBs to plug into. You're not gonna find those in this vehicle. If you wanted that, you're probably gonna wanna be in something like a CRV. So just something to be aware of, if that's important to you, mm, don't know if you wanna do this. While we're back here, I do wanna do one important thing and that's show you the different trim levels and what they come with, whether it's cloth, whether it's cloth and leather mixed, or whether it's just full on leather. So take a look at the three different trims that the vehicle has to offer and understand what is available to you. All right, guys, so let's talk about the front row of this vehicle. So in the front row, leg space wise, you've got 41.9 inches of leg space. It's actually a lot of leg space, man. If I get in this car, right, and I throw this back, look, <laughs> this is obnoxiously a lot of space, right? This is actually more than if you had a CRV. The CRV is only 41.3 inches of leg space. So just something to be aware of. So I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can understand how does the 41.9 inches of leg space in this vehicle stack up against other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I just wanna to talk to you about one or two things, and that's gonna be the seats. Now, this has a manual seat on this side and a manual seat on that side. Depending on the trim level of certain Hondas, you can typically get a powered seat, uh, or it's gonna be a manual or both in powered, or depending on that. Now, on the HRV, I wanna say I'm pretty sure they're only manual, but I'll double check and throw something up on the screen so you can understand, hey, if I climb up to that EXL trim level, is there the possibility of getting an electric seat? This may look odd, and that's because it is odd. I'm in, out in the middle of the parking lot, I'm laying on the ground, but I wanted to talk to you about ground clearance. This vehicle has seven inches of ground clearance from here to here. So if you're shopping SUVs, maybe ground clearance is important to you. So I'm gonna throw something up on the screen so you can see how the seven inches of ground clearance on this vehicle stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you, if you're in a 2023, not gonna make a difference, gonna have roughly the same ground clearance, so you'd be safe to shop a pre-owned model if you can find one. Now, talking about the seats, we talked about the back seat, and you saw what this kind of looked like, and then coming across, you have that leather. Now, across the dash, this is very similar to what you'd see in a Honda Civic. Very simplified, very few buttons, kind of an elegant look. I actually really like it. It eliminates a lot of clutter, which can become kind of an anxiety attack at a point on certain cars. When you come over to the steering wheel, you got a nice clean steering wheel. It's not too bad as far as the amount of buttons on it, but they kind of make sense. Source button, home button, you scroll around to look at stuff. And then this is gonna be some of your cruise control and other safety features. So really quickly, I just wanna to talk to you about touchscreens and of course, audio systems, right? So all of these vehicles are gonna come with a seven inch touchscreen. Seven inch touchscreen is gonna to be pretty universal. You'll find that in almost every line of Honda offers. When you get into some of the higher end models, you sometimes find nine inch touchscreens. But for the sake of the HRV, in the LX, you're gonna have a 180 watt system that pushes out to four speakers. Now, if you're in the Sport model, still 180 watts, but it's pushing out to six speakers. So a couple extra tweeters. And then if you're in that EXL model, still 180 watts, but it's gonna be pushing out to eight speakers. So understand, depending on the trim level that you pick, is gonna affect the amount of speakers that come standard in the vehicle. So before we do a review on the touchscreen and I walk you through some basic features and functions and a couple tricks that I know, I wanna talk about safety features. Now, inside of this vehicle, it comes with some basic features that pretty much all Hondas come with. The first is gonna be airbags. You got six at least, right? Two front, two side, two full curtain to protect you. You've also got ACE body structure. Stands for Advanced Compatibility Engineering. 
Hard to say. But what that means is it's designed with certain parts of the body to crinkle and others to fall out in the event that you get in an accident. So, right, engine mounts are designed to fall out so the engine will get pushed down and below you so it doesn't come up through the cabin and hurt your passengers. There's crinkle zones in different parts of the car to crinkle to push things up, out, and around the vehicle to protect your passengers. So, a lot of different things that are going to this vehicle. Now, you've also got things like backup cameras. This vehicle's the same in that sense, right? So, I've got a backup camera right here, and it's adaptive in the sense that if I cut the wheel, the dynamic lines will cut with me as well. It's got three different views. So I got a wide angle view, right? So you can get about 170 degrees. I've got a standard backup camera and then one aimed straight down. So if I'm backing up to a curb, a garage, a bush, whatever the case may be, this dotted line is where the hatch will open to. And this solid line is if you're parallel parking, you want them to be on the other side of this, right? Now, additionally, on top of that, you've also got cross traffic monitoring. So if another car was coming from the left or the right when I'm backing out of a spot, maybe I'm in between two big trucks, two big SUVs, whatever the case may be, it'll actually give you an audible alert and give you lines on the screen that'll flash to let you know, hey, there's somebody coming from your left or your right. So it's using sensors off the back end of the car, standard in this vehicle. Now, two other features that you have that are standard in this vehicle that are gonna be safety wise are gonna be right here on your steering wheel. The first is gonna be related to your cruise control. So if I get up to my speed, I can set this button to set the cruise and you'll see that same indicator come on right there where my finger is. And then as I'm going down the road at 65, I can designate how much space it'll keep between me and cars in front of me. When I have this on, right? So as I press it, see more and more boxes appear up there in the center. The more boxes, the more space it's gonna keep between me and the car in front of me. And what it's doing is it's using radar in the front to bounce it off the car in front of me. So if that car is going 65 and they slow down to 55, my car will keep the designated space that I pick until I get out and around them and it'll take me back up to my speed. So that's adaptive cruise control. You just want classic cruise control, you can press and hold this and it'll flip over to classic cruise and it'll say cruise mode selected, right? Now the other is lane keep assist, that's right here. If I turn this button on, you're gonna see that same indicator appear right here. What it's gonna do is use a camera up here to detect the lines on the road. So if I'm driving down the road and I start to drift a little bit out of my lane to the left or right, it can actually correct for me and keep me centered. If you've ever been in a car that pulls a little bit to the left or pulls a little bit to the right, that's what this feels like when it's correcting for you. It's not anything jarring and if you ever needed to overpower because there was an emergency, you absolutely could. But no, another safety feature, standard in Hondas. All right guys, so let's talk about the seven inch touchscreen that's living inside of this vehicle. So for for the most part, if you're not using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, this thing looks pretty damn generic. I'm not gonna lie. You know, you jump into your phone, you can of course connect up a phone, access phone calls, make phone calls, all of those things. You can jump over to the radio, all your normal things, right? If you wanna go find a station, then press and hold to save that station, right? Whether you're in FM or you're in AM, no big deal there. Media-wise, if you wanna use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which I am currently, or if you wanna just stream via Bluetooth, or if you wanted to plug something in the USB with a bunch of music on it, you could do that as well jump over to the connection here and this will jump into Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, if you're not familiar with these, which kind of hard not to at this point, but basically what it does is it allows you to pull some of the apps on your phone up onto here. Now, I will tell you that it is a wired connection in this vehicle, so just something to be aware of. Uh, it does not offer wireless, so I want you to be aware of that. And then secondarily, just some basics to understanding how this works and some tips and tricks. The first thing I want to talk about is, you know, you've got all these different apps you can take advantage of that live in here. Some of them are going to be limited in the sense that like if I'm in Spotify and I'm driving, it's going to force me to search using voice command versus being able to type something in. I get it, it's safety wise, but sometimes, and I think all of us have been there, you try to use the voice command and it just does not get what you're saying. In this vehicle, it'll actually give you the option to use your phone's back screen onto this dashboard right here versus where in other models, you might have the ability to pull up like generic backgrounds that they've created by going into the settings and choosing one, right? Now, additionally, you could change the layout. So what you see here is the map over here and then your audio over here. Know that you can switch that. If you come back down into here and you go to your settings, you can scroll down here to change layout, click that, and then you can switch it. And that way, when you jump back over here, you'll notice that now they flip flop for yourself. Now, the other thing you can do, and this is kind of cool, is you can add in shortcuts in, in their custom actions, right? So whether it's something as, hey, direct me to the nearest gas station, right? It'll prompt it, it'll do it all itself, and then it'll pull it up and show me the nearest one, and then I just hit go, and it'll start directing me. Kind of cool, right? If there's a favorite restaurant you want, we're here in Texas, maybe it's Whataburger, right? It'll pull up, search the nearest Whataburger, and then direct me to it. Or maybe you're a coffee drinker, you wanna go to Starbucks, boom, it'll do the Starbucks for you and direct you there, right? The other way you can set that up is to custom call someone, right? So if I press that, it would automatically start calling my Google phone number. So kind of cool that you can do this. So understand that you have some shortcuts here that you can take advantage of. Now, if you wanna set up those custom actions, all you gotta do is go down to customize. If you select customize, you'll then unlock your phone and what it'll do is it'll pull up the launcher, right? So I'm using Android Auto, so you'll see my launcher load. Right now, at the very top of your launcher, there's gonna be add, add a shortcut to the launcher. From there, I can then select it. Now, if it's calling a contact, you go in here, you find your contact that you wanna, you select them and you add them. Easy enough, right? If you wanna do the secondary one, that's add an assistant action. 
So it's going to come in here. The first thing you would want is the, the command, right? So maybe directions to nearest library. Now, the second part to this is you want to label it, right? So library. Now, from there, you may want to test the command or you just want to create the shortcut, right? So we're going to go ahead and create it. I'm pretty sure that this will work, right? Now, from there, you can then pick the order. Now, currently, this is living down at the bottom. I may want to grab this and I take it, you know, way up to the top, right? So if that's the case, you know, maybe I drag it up there to wherever I want it to live. And maybe while I'm up here, I want to rearrange some stuff. I want my maps to be first. I want my messages to be maybe second. Uh, and then I want Spotify to be third, right? So we're just going to move some stuff around and we're going to move that library to the very top as well. So once you've done that, if you want this to take effect, you're going to have to disconnect, right? After you've reconnected, right? And allow it to connect back up, it'll then replace that order for you and add that custom action. So now when I jump in here, you're going to see this going to pull up libraries there. I can go ahead and select it. It'll drop in the prompt for me and then give me the directions to the nearest library. And then secondarily, you can also see it's also rearranged everything as I asked it to. Now, if you've ever wished that you could watch TV on your screen, well, know that it's something that's possible. And I'm actually able to do that by a tool that I'm using. Now, this isn't from Honda, so it's gonna be something a little bit different, but it gives me access and control over a lot of different apps. And one, I can go download any app I want. And then two, if I wanna use my streaming services, I absolutely can. Now, how am I doing this? What I'm using is this box right here. This is the CPC 200T box. This is from Carlink Kit. What this does is essentially turn your head unit into a tablet. So it's allowing me to come in, download any app I want, such as Netflix. Once I'm in Netflix, I can then stream and watch anything that I want. And what's really cool about us is I don't run into a lot of lag or anything like that. It's not like off, the audio fits, everything works just fine, as you can see here. Now, I'm gonna jump out of this and explain kind of how that works, right? So I'm gonna go back to the home screen. So how it's doing this is I'm offering up my phone as a hotspot for Connect Up to use that data to be able to stream that. And it's super simple. I just go into settings. Once I get into settings, I go to Wi-Fi. From there, I would come into my phone, turn on my hotspot, which I've done, and then connect up to it. Once it's connected, it's essentially like now I'm using a tablet. So whether I wanna take advantage of all those apps that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto have, things like Maps, things like Spotify, you know, all the normal apps, the only difference is, is that now when I go into them, it's like using Spotify on my phone sitting at home or on my laptop or on a tablet sitting in my house in the sense that it's completely unlocked, right? If I wanna go into the search, I'm not forced to search by voice command. I could come in here and type out something that I want. When I click into an artist, it's gonna show me the full version of their, their artist page, right? Songs that I've already liked, songs that are popular, artist picks, you know, radio stations that are like them, popular releases all of this info. So it's giving you essentially fully unlocked versions of the apps. Now, obviously be safe, right? When you're driving down the road, maybe ask your passenger to type something in, not yourself. Or if you're, you know, if you're gonna pick a show, maybe you just listen to it while you're driving. Don't necessarily watch it yourself. You know, be smart about how you do this, but understand you can take advantage of this. Now, one other really cool thing that you can do is let's say I came in here and I had a couple things pulled up, right? So for the sake of this, I'm gonna go to YouTube. And then while I had YouTube up, I was like, man, I really need to have YouTube up and another app. Know that you can split the screen. So if I wanted to come in here and have YouTube up and then flip over here and say, hey, I wanna have that up and Spotify, I can have both of these things on the screen at the same time. So it's kind of cool that it allows you to split the screen. Now understand for the sake of this box, it won't allow you to split the screen with Netflix, but it will with several apps. There's other boxes out there and I've reviewed them that will allow you to do it, but they're considerably more expensive. Speaking of expensive, this box is $155 if you buy it through their webpage. Now, because I review vehicles and they've asked me to review some of their products before, I have a coupon code. It's my name, Justin Fuller. Um, so if you wanted to use that, you could get this box for $127.10. Pretty good deal for what it has to offer. All right, guys, so we've made it through the entire video and I want to go back and revisit all of the comparisons. So if you miss something you scrub through, this is the place to pay attention. All right, so in the front of this vehicle, you've got a two liter engine putting out 158 horsepower. I'm gonna throw that comparison up so you can see how does this engine putting out 158 horsepower stack up to other makes and models out in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you if you're looking at a 23, maybe something pre-owned, it's the exact same engine, exact same transmission, CVT setup, right? Now, when it comes to MPGs, this car gets 26 in the city and 32 on the highway. Understand if you go to an all wheel drive model, that is gonna differentiate, right? There's gonna be some differences there. But I wanna throw something up on the screen so you can see how does the MPGs in this vehicle stack up against other makes and models out in the world. While it's up, I'll just remind you once again, 23, not gonna make a difference. It is gonna be the same as far as that goes. Now, in the front of this car, I've got 41.9 inches of leg space. That's a lot. It's bigger than the CRV. I've got plenty of space and the center console is a little, 
It's not quite as fat as the CRV, but I've got a space where I can spread out too. So if you're a man spreading kind of guy, you're good to go. But I want to throw some up on the screen so you can understand how does the 41.9 inches of leg space stack up to other vehicles out there in the world? While that's up, I'll remind you 23, the exact same, you're good to go shop pre-owned. Now, when you jump into the second row, you've got 37.7 inches of leg space in this vehicle. So I'm gonna throw that comparison up so you can see how it stacks up to other makes and models out there in the world. While that's up, I'll just remind you, yeah, if you were in a CRV, you'd be at 41 inches, so a little bit bigger in the back of this vehicle, but not dramatically big. So depending on what your needs are, maybe this saves you the money that you need to get there, right? Now, when you go to cargo space, with the seats folded up, you've got 24.4 cubic feet of cargo space in the back of this vehicle. So I'm gonna throw a comparison up so you can see how does that 24.4 stack up against other makes and models out there in the world. While it's up, 23, remind you, exact same, you're good, shop pre-owned, save some dollars. Now, when you flip those seats down, you've got 55.1 cubic feet of cargo space with the full potential, right? The full cargo space. So I'll throw that comparison up so you can understand how does the full cargo space stack up against other makes and models out in the world? While that's up, I'll just remind you, it's nice and flat back there. So if you wanted to go camping, you could throw something back there and sleep in the car. If you needed to throw a bicycle or something in here, you probably have to go sideways to get it because you just don't have the height, but you could absolutely do it. If you were in a band and you had some equipment, guitars, amps, drum set, whatever the case may be, you've actually got a lot of space back there. You could use it. Now, lastly, I want to talk about the trim levels. This is the sport. So below it is the LX and above it is the EXL. So if you're thinking, hey, I might want to save a little bit of money and I want to drop down that LX, how much money is it going to save you? And then what's the list of items that you're gonna give up to do so? And then secondarily, if you're in the sport and you're thinking, maybe I drop a couple extra bucks and I wanna get that EXL, right? How much extra is that gonna cost you? And then what is that list of items that you're gonna gain by spending that extra money? Now, after all is said and done, I just wanna ask you for a couple favors. One, I hope you'll press the like button because you like the way I present the content. Two, I'll help you leave a comment. If you feel like I missed something, if there's something you wanna see, or if you have questions, please do ask. Put it out there, either I'll answer. I find that a lot of people in the community will reach out and give you answers for what they do know. Third, I'll help you subscribe to the channel so when I produce content like this or on products like the CPC 200 T-Box, pretty cool, you'll get info on that. And then fourth, I hope you'll uh, share the video, man. If you got some friends that are shopping for a small SUV or concerning a Honda or even specifically an HRV, I hope you'll share this video with them saying, so see how this car stacks up against other makes and models out there in the world. So, like, comment, subscribe, all the things that are guys.